That's a problem. So he said, everyone that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting and taking hold of my covenant, even them what? Verse 7. Even them will I bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. See, this is a future blessing. This is in the future he's talking about. This hasn't happened yet, but go ahead. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon mine altar. Why? For mine house shall be called in house of prayer for all people. For all people. That means the Sabbath is for all people, brothers and sisters. That means it's one Lord, one faith. See, it's not accurate, brothers and sisters, for me to have a, my own faith and I'm going to keep the seventh day. Like we here at church today. We here at church today, but the majority of people are going to be at church tomorrow, right? That's right. They're going to be filling up church. Look, somebody wrong. You got to figure it out. Somebody, we both can't be right. Somebody is wrong. Because we can't be serving the same God doing it different ways. So what you have to do is figure out where, what did God say? Well, God said the seventh day. Say, so, oh, I can't figure it out. Yeah, you can figure out. Look in the dictionary. Look on your calendar. They, they ain't even tried to hide that from you. You can see what day. And we know today is the seventh day. So all you got to do is do follow that. And God can't get you for that. Even if it was wrong, even if something had changed, which it hadn't, because God said it was seven days in the beginning and we still got seven days now. But even if it changed, you said, God, you know, you said seven day, you know, this, I did what best I could do with the seven day. God ain't going to hold you accountable for that. So he said he going to even bless these non-Israelites for this. Go ahead. Verse uh, eight. The Lord God, which gathereth the outcasts of Israel, saith. See, he going to gather Israel, but he going to gather non-Israel, too. Go ahead. Yet will I gather others to him, besides those that are gathered unto him. Okay, now let's go to Acts uh, 13. We're going to go to the New Testament, because people say, yeah, you know, like I said, the, the Romans then told us that, you know, Saturday is the Jewish Sabbath, and we go for that. And, you know, but see, we, we don't do that. We do the Christian Sabbath. That would be fine if you can read that to me in the Bible. But that's saying, again, we can go about it different ways. And God said we all got to come the same way. It's one Lord, one faith, one baptism. So how my faith going to say the seventh day and your faith going to say it changed to the first day? That's what they say, by the way. It changed to the first day. We're going to read it. Acts 13 and 13. Acts 13 and 13. This is Paul. Now, this is the New Testament. So if it's going to change, I want to see the change in the Bible. We know it's been a seven day all throughout the Old Testament. We saw Jesus kept the seventh day holy. He went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. 13 and 13. Go ahead. Now, when Paul and his company loose from Pappas, they came to Perga in Pamphylia and John departing from them returned to Jerusalem. Uh huh. But when they departed from Perga, they came to Antioch in Presidia and went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and sat down. See, they went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, right? And they sat down. Now, again, won't, won't no biblical scholar, won't none of these, even a Catholic priest, if you ask them, say, well, well you know, I know we go to church on Sunday, Pastor, but I got a question from uh, Acts 13, verse 14. I want to know what day was Paul doing? What day was this? He will tell you it was Saturday. He ain't going to lie to you. He said, oh, yeah, that was Saturday back then, but we changed it later. Well, who, told, who gave you the authority to change it? But they went in the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and it said they sat down. And what, what happened? 15. And after the reading of the law and the prophets. Because that's how they did. They had a reading in the beginning, like kind of we opened up kind of similar. They had a reading. They read something. Then they let some people talk. After the reading of the law and the prophets, go ahead. The rulers of the synagogue sent unto them, saying, Ye men and brethren, mm -hmm. if ye have any word of exhortation for the people, say on. Uh-huh, go ahead. Then Paul stood up. See, then Paul stood up. Go ahead. And beckoning with his hand, said, Men of Israel, mm -hmm. ye that fear God, give audience. Okay, so now he, he started to preach to them. We ain't going to read his whole sermon. What we're going to do is skip down to the end of his sermon. Because we want to get to a point. You can read the rest on your own. It's all good reading. But we're just trying to get to the point we, we proving today. Verse 42. Go ahead. 
And when the Jews was gone out of the synagogue. Okay, so now this all took place in the synagogue. Paul got the preaching to him. Some people liked it. And they're going to come up to him when they was leaving. When the Jews were gone out of the synagogue. This is all on the Sabbath day, though. And we're going to see that. Go ahead. The, gen the Gentiles besought that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. See, now notice this, brothers and sisters. Everybody knew about the Sabbath back here. They knew the importance of it. So my point to you is, if it's like it is now, where well, you know that the Catholics have told you, but well, that's the Jewish Sabbath day, and the so-called Jews do have service today, like we doing, even though they don't really understand Jesus, but they got service today. And then the Catholics and all the so-called Christians, because if you're going to be a Christian, you're going to be like Christ. Christ kept the seventh day. Christ ordained the seventh day. But the so-called Christians all go on Sunday. And they say, well, that's because that's seventh day is the Jewish Sabbath and the first day is the Christian Sabbath. But we read in the Bible. See, these other nationalities who came to the word of God, they did not pick up their own Sabbath day in the Bible. Notice it said right here, the Gentiles didn't have their own Sabbath day Sunday, did they? Verse 42 said, when the Jews were gone out of the syn synagogue, the Gentiles besought that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath day. So they knew how important it was to keep the Sabbath day. And they said, look, can you preach that to us the next Sabbath day? They didn't say nothing about Sunday, the first day. So they knew they was going to observe the same Sabbath day as the Jews. There was not two Sabbath days to, for different people. Go ahead, 43. Now, when the congregation was broken up, many of the Jews and religious proselytes followed Paul and mm -hmm. Barnabas, who, speaking to them, persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. See, mostly the Jews was in the synagogue. That was mostly the Jews because the Gentiles wasn't readily accepted in the synagogues. Go ahead. And the next Sabbath day. And now the next Sabbath day. We talking about a week later. The next Sabbath day. Why are we reading about the Sabbath day, the next Sabbath day, if the Sabbath day is supposed to be done away with anyway? If it don't matter. You know what I'm saying? If it don't matter, why are we reading about it in Acts? Because they say, well, that was just in the Old Testament. But I'm reading the New Testament now. And the next Sabbath day, what happened? Came almost the whole city together to hear the word of God. Oh, almost the whole city came. But why they wait to the Sabbath day? Because that was going to be observed, brothers and sisters, the Sabbath day. And whose Sabbath it is? It's, the, it's not the Jews, brothers and sisters. It's not a Christian Sabbath or a Jewish Sabbath. It's one Sabbath. It's Jesus. Anything else, man, and lie to you. Go ahead. But when the Jews saw the multitude, mm -hmm. they were filled with envy and spake against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. You always got that's going to happen because people, people are always going to try to come against the truth, even though they don't have a leg to stand on. But now pick it up at uh, Acts. Go to Acts 17 now. Acts 17. And we're going to pick it up at 1. We're going to read it again. See, when you can prove things over and over and over again out of the Bible, then you know it's right. Not just read a half a verse and talk, talk, talk. That's what the preacher going to be doing tomorrow. But we reading hundreds of verses. 17 and 1. Go ahead. Now, when they had passed through Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, mm -hmm. where was a synagogue of the Jews. Okay, so they went to, see, Paul was traveling all over preaching to people, but every time he got to a place, he kept the Sabbath day. Go ahead. And Paul, at his manner was, went in unto them, and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the scripture. Oh, so that's three weeks running. Paul, he got to this place, he said, as his manner was, this was his manner, whenever he got to situated, he observed the Sabbath day. Now, I told you, I talked to a Catholic priest years ago. He said, well, you know, Paul only observed that day. You know, he really wasn't observing it. You know, he just went there just cause, so he could preach to the people because that was where the people was. So, look, if the Sabbath day is unimportant, why even, if it changed by now? My question to him is, when did it change to Sunday and why he ain't in church on Sunday like you are? He can't answer that. But he tried to make it, you know, where, you know, he just went to preach to the people. So I said, okay, you got, you know, that's, that could be plausible. I give him that. I give him that. And then I hit him with something else. But 
He said, Paul and his man of words went into them and three Sabbath days running. Reason with them. Notice he read some scripture too. Wasn't no New Testament to read, by the way. There was no Acts 17 to read. He live in Acts 17 right now, right? There was no Acts 17 written down somewhere. He was reading the scripture, the Old Testament, because that told you the whole story. The New Testament just verified. That's all it's doing. That's why Paul's still keeping the, 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 the Sabbath day that God gave in, in Genesis. But go ahead. What did he teach? Opening in a legend that Christ must need have suffered and risen again from the dead. And that this Jesus whom I preach unto you is Christ. See, he was preaching Jesus out the Old Testament because that's where Jesus is at. That's where he started at. Jesus didn't just drop out the sky. No, he was prophesying all over the Old Testament. And he was preaching Christ to these people. But he was observing the Sabbath day. Now, we're going to throw this in here. This is what I was talking about in Acts 16 because he wanted to make it about the synagogue. Like he just went to the synagogue because, you know, the people was there. So it, it wasn't about the Sabbath. It was just the priest to the people. So I said, okay, read this. Acts 16. Here's a place where Paul was. And it didn't matter. If it wasn't no synagogue or not, Paul's still going to recognize the Sabbath day, bro. And that means he's going to have a holy gathering. He's going to deal with some book. He's going to deal with the word of God. He's going to focus on God. He's going to rest from what he's doing. On this day, uh, Acts 16, we're going to throw this in here. Uh, verse nine, Acts 16 and nine. Go ahead. And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia and prayed him saying, come over into Macedonia and help us. Go ahead. And after he had seen the vision, immediately we endeavored to go into Macedonia assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us for to preach the gospel unto them. See, and that's what you, you need guidance from the Lord where to preach the gospel at. That's why when I got ready to preach the gospel on my own, I sought the Lord diligently about it, and the Lord gave me some guidance. Or even some people said, well, why you got to go through all that asking the Lord and praying and fasting? Because I want to make sure I'm doing the right thing. People ask me that. One brother that was supposed to be coming with me, he said, oh, man, you ain't got to do all that. Lord said, preach the gospel. Look, in some places where Paul wanted to go preach the gospel, it said he was forbidden to preach there. It said he was forbidden to preach there. You can read that. See, that's why he had this vision. Now he gathered that the Lord wanted him to go here at this time. But it was also said at, at a time he was forbidden to preach this. It's just like we didn't thought about, we could we could been open up some more congregation in other places by now, but we seek the Lord diligently before we do it. And we didn't thought about opening up some congregations in places where I just knew it, it, that was the right thing to do. But we prayed and fasted and, and, and sought the Lord on it. And the Lord came back and said, no, nah, don't do that. Not, not at this time anyway. And then later on, some stuff fell out. And I said, oh, well, I kind of see why the Lord said that. But I didn't see that stuff at that time. So you want to be seeking the Lord on it. So Paul had a vision, so he gathered assuredly the Lord wanted him to go there. Go ahead, 11. Therefore, loosening from Torres, we came with a straight course to Samothracia. Uh -huh. And the next day to Nepal. He traveling around as usual. Naples. But notice when he gets situated or wherever he at, when the Sabbath day comes, he's staying at attention. He knows something going on. He knows he's supposed to act differently on this day. Go ahead. And from this to Philippia, which is the chief city of that part of Macedonia uh -huh. and a colony. Go ahead. And we were in that city abiding certain days. They was in that city. He hanging out in this city certain days. But all his whole mission is to preach the gospel. But he hears certain days and then what day happened. Go ahead. And on the Sabbath. And on the Sabbath. See, he know when the Sabbath come, brothers and sisters, every week. He keep track. He know it ain't like he just said, well, the Sabbath don't matter no more. And, you know, now we're going to go to church on Sunday. See, again, won't nobody dispute what day this is either. You ask anybody, you ask the preacher, say, well, what day was this? Was this Saturday or Sunday? I guarantee he's going to tell you it was Saturday. He ain't going to even lie to you about that. He's going he gonna to still say it changed later. But everybody know this was Saturday right here that Paul observed. The seventh day. Don't, the name don't mean nothing. It was the seventh day. And on the Sabbath, we went 
What'd he do on the we, Sabbath? We went out of the city by a riverside. Oh, see, even though it wasn't no synagogue to go to, evidently, I don't know for sure or not, but it didn't matter. It's still the Sabbath, and we still going to chill. Okay. We still going to chill. We still going to focus on the Lord. We're going to go somewhere where we can meditate and maybe preach the gospel to somebody about the Lord. So on the Sabbath, we went out of the city by a riverside. Where what? Where prayer was wont to be made. See, they knew some people was hanging out there kind of trying to be spiritual, right? Where prayer was wont to be made. So they said, look, let's go over here and hang out. But notice, it's the Sabbath, right? That's right. Wasn't the, see, the Catholic priest, he didn't know what he was dealing with. He going to tell me, well, he just went there because that's where the people was on the Sabbath. Well, look... It wasn't no synagogue here. He still recognized the Sabbath. And they went out there and started preaching to the people. But that's good. I just want to throw that in there. Go to Acts 20 now. Go to Acts 20. Now, we see all this about the Sabbath. We know it was the seventh day. What I'm trying to point out to you, brothers and sisters, if the preacher is going to tell us that the Sabbath changed from Saturday to seventh day, to Sunday the first day, which is what they saying, then I need to see that in the Bible. Everything I see still called the seven day the Sabbath. It don't even call it the seven day, it just called the Sabbath. Everywhere in the Bible. And when I read about the first day, you know what they call it? The first day. That's it. It don't call it nothing special. It don't say the new Sabbath day. Acts 20 and verse 6. This is what preachers will read, though, to try to say it changed. Pay attention to this now. This show you this is hypocrisy. 20 and 6. Go ahead. And we sailed away from Philippi after the days of unleavened bread. Now he's sailing away again. He's traveling again. So they left Philippi. Notice when he left Philippi after the days of unleavened bread. See, that's a holy feast in the Bible that we observe. Paul was observing it. Why mention it if you're not observing it, right? See, they want to see. Man is slick. They want to do away with everything in the Bible and give us this new stuff, Christmas and Easter, Halloween, that ain't in the Bible. That's only from the devil. You're going to take what God then gave you out of his mouth and say it's no good and give us some devilish stuff because that's all it is. So I'm reading this because <laughs> verse 7 is where Preachers then came to try to prove the new Sabbath day. But they missed verse 6. He said, we sailed away from Philippi after the days of unleavened bread. So that means Paul was observing the feast of unleavened bread. And he stayed in Philippi purposely and waited. To, again, if it was done away with, why are we even talking about it? Why are we even talking about it? Ain't, none, ain't no need to even talk about it if it's done away with or if it's changed. If he was celebrating Good Friday and Easter. After the days of unleavened bread and did what? And came unto them to Torres in five days. Uh -huh. Where we abode seven days. Okay, now this is what they try to hit you with. So watch out. This is what they're going to go to when they try to change it up on you. They're going to come to verse seven. They ain't going to even read six. But seven, go ahead. And upon the first day of the week. Oh, they see they got you. See, brother, the first day of the week. That's Sunday. I said, yeah, I know it is. That's see, notice what Paul did. Upon the first day of the week, what else? When the disciples came together to break bread. Uh-huh, they came together to eat. Go ahead. Paul preached unto them. Uh-huh. Ready to depart on the morrow. Uh -huh. And continue his speech until midnight. See, when they get through, I said, that's all you got? Then they said, well, it's another one in 1 Corinthians 16. They usually go there. We ain't going to read that. But it just say the first day of the week. Paul did something on it. But again, does this mean the Sabbath day changed? Because these brothers came together and ate and Paul preached. We preach on any day. But that don't change the Sabbath day. Why didn't they call it at least the new Sabbath day one time? We just read in Acts 17, in Acts 16, in Acts 13, it said the Sabbath, the Sabbath, the Sabbath, right? That's right. Referring to the seventh day. So when we get something about the first day, it didn't say nothing special about it. It just called it what it was, the first day of the week upon the first day of the week when the disciples came together to break bread they said oh see they broke bread look any day you eat some bread and it's too big to put the whole piece in your mouth you need to break it i'm gonna tell you that right now and eat it that don't that ain't like, oh that's holy they broke bread no they just really just saying they ate brother so they came together to eat paul was actually getting ready to leave 
and he preached to them. Look, we used to come up here on the first day on Sunday a lot and have to shoot TV shows. We was preaching on the first day. If I see somebody or leaving and get a chance to preach to somebody on any day, we'd preach to them. That don't change the Sabbath day, though. The Sabbath day is the Sabbath. That's the day you definitely have a holy convocation and you don't work on that day. So upon the first day of the week when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them. And what else it said? Ready to depart on the morrow. See, he probably was giving them a long uh, lesson because he was getting ready to leave. It's my last shot. I'm going to preach to y'all because I'm leaving tomorrow. Ready to depart on tomorrow. Go ahead. And continue his speech until midnight. And he went all the way to midnight. But now skip down to verse 16 because again, verse 6 showed you he was keeping God's holy days. We just saw he was still keeping the weekly Sabbath. Now verse 16 going to mention another holy day. Go ahead. For Paul had determined to sail by Ephesus mm -hmm. because he would not spend the time in Asia. Mm -hmm. For he hasted if it were possible for him to be at Jerusalem the day of Pentecost. Okay, now he keeping Pentecost. The, the holy day that we just got through keeping a few weeks ago. He keeping that. He hurrying to try to make it to Jerusalem to observe. He just got through keeping Feast of Unleavened Bread. He observed all the feasts. Because they holy days and they Sabbath days as well, brothers and sisters. But now, go to, uh, go to 1 Corinthians 16. I'm going to throw this in here since I mentioned it. 1 Corinthians 16. See, I'm just going to show you what the preacher used to try to say the Sabbath changed. They use it in your windows. Nothing specific. 1 Corinthians 16 and pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead. Now concerning the collection for the saints... As I have given order to the churches of Gal Galatia, mm -hmm. even so do we. Uh huh. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store, as God hath pro prospered him, that there be no gathering when I come. See, Paul is telling them that they they gonna make a donation. He said, just get it together. So when I get there, it's prepared. I don't want to go through no changes when I get there. Have it together when I get there. So he gave them a day. He said, upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store. So people say, see, there go the first day of the week again. That don't change the Sabbath day, brother. It doesn't say nothing about the new Sabbath or anything. Or do something real holy on it. It didn't say nothing about it. But now let's look at why that's important. We're going to go to the World Book Encyclopedia. We're going to read some history. See, when you can't find what, you, what people are saying in the Bible, then you automatically know it ain't true. Then when you do a little research, you can find out talk, clearly that it ain't true when it comes to stuff like this, historical events. World Book Encyclopedia. That should be, you, you should have that hand out. That's the top one on the left. World Book Encyclopedia. See, we got three encyclopedias we're going to read from. Just to show you. And this is in your encyclopedia. You got one at home. You go on the internet. Or you look even in a, in a, in a little cheap dictionary. It's going to say similar. Because we seen, brothers and sisters, from Genesis all the way down. We have been so far in, uh, in Acts and 1 Corinthians. We ain't seen the Sabbath day change to Sunday. I'm telling you that because that's the spiel that man has given us. That's why everybody go to church on Sunday. They follow in the lie that the Sabbath day changed. And they even tell a lie that Jesus rose on Sunday. That's the big lie. That's why you got Easter Sunday. That's the big lie, brothers and sisters. Jesus didn't rise on no Sunday. World Book Encyclopedia, Volume 17. World Book Encyclopedia, Volume 17. Under Sabbath. Go ahead, brother. Sabbath is the rest day of the Jews. See, now they said it like, like the world said. But we didn't see that in the Bible, did we? No. Actually, it's, it's God resting. Wasn't no Jew in Genesis 2, was it? Wasn't no Jew. He created Adam and Eve on the sixth day. And God rested on the seventh day. So really, if you're going to be accurate, they don't quite understand. If you're going to be accurate, you say it's the rest day of God. Because God is the one rested first. He told man later to do it. But anyway, we give them that because God did give it to the Jews later. In the Ten Commandments, he gave it to Israel. That's Jew is short for that. It's the rest day of the Jews. Go ahead. It comes on Saturday. 
the seventh day of the week. Oh, it comes on Saturday, the seventh day of the week. Go ahead. Today, Christians also use the word Sabbath for their Sunday. See, today, Christians also use the word Sabbath for their Sunday. So they didn't change it up, right? Go ahead. In ancient Hebrew history, the Sabbath was a joyous holy day. Mm -hmm. On the Sabbath, people stopped working, visit the temple, and offer a double number of sacrifices. Mm -hmm. One of the Ten Commandments is about observing the Sabbath. See, one of the Ten Commandments. We read it. That's how important it is. Go ahead. After the Babylonian exile, Sabbath observant became very strict. The Jews suffered many losses and insults rather than break the Sabbath laws. In the oral law, 39 major and minor kinds of labor were forbidden. See, they started coming up with all kind of stuff, but the Lord just said, don't work. You got to just use common sense. Now, if you get in a situation, you got to do something, something come up. Like your car break on the way here. You're on the expressway. And I get out and I start fixing the car. The Lord understand that. But go ahead. These including bearing burdens, mm -hmm. gathering sticks, mm -hmm. lighting fires, and traveling more than a Sabbath day's journey. Uh-huh. Many Jews today still keep strict Sabbath regulations. Uh-huh. The, the Jewish Sabbath begins at sunset Friday evening and lasts until sunset Saturday. See, and that's the way it always did. That's why I say you got some brothers coming up say, where the day start, you know, you're supposed to start in, at sun up. And it's from sun up to sun up. So that means I'm supposed to keep the Sabbath from Saturday morning to Sunday morning. That's not biblical. And that means everybody in the Bible who was keeping it. Like you read Nehemiah 13, when the gates began to get dark, he locked it down. On Friday evening, the, the day before, the eve of, because that's the beginning of it. So that means all those people was wrong, and God didn't say nothing to them one time, if that be the case. But they wasn't wrong. If they was wrong, God would have sent a prophet. Why y'all keeping the Sabbath at Friday evening? Y'all supposed to wait till Saturday morning. But I watched the video the brothers put out trying to say that. They ain't got one scripture to say it's supposed to start at sunup. They ain't got one scripture. So again, you got to be careful with people just talking but not backing it up because people can talk good. But this is how it's been observed. He said the Jewish Sabbath, we know it's not the Jewish, we know it's God's. The Jewish Sabbath begins at sunset Friday evening and lasts until sunset Saturday. Go ahead. Christians have generally adopted Sunday as the Sabbath because they believe Jesus Christ rose from the dead on the first day of the week. See, that's, see, that's what the change came in. That's where the change came in. Read the last part because this is what people think you are when you do it and, uh, and you're not. Go ahead. But the Seventh Day Adventist group, a Christian sect, observes Saturday as the Sabbath. See, they do and people associate us with them, but we're not them either. Because they still do a whole lot of other traditional stuff. But anyway, go to the next one, which is the New Standard Encyclopedia right under that. Now we're going to read under Sunday. We read different encyclopedias. We're going to just read what it say. Because we didn't see no change of the Sabbath in the Bible. All over the Bible, it say the seventh day, the seventh day, the seventh day. Not one time do it change to the first day. Uh, New Standard Encyclopedia, Volume 9. Go ahead. Sunday, the first day of the week. Now this is what the encyclopedia tell you. So people say, oh, you don't know what day is what. Well, read your encyclopedia if you're that dumb. Read something. It's telling you right here. Your calendar tells you they got Sunday the first day of the week. They make it red and highlighted, but it's still at the left the first day, right? right. On, the, on the calendar. The seventh day all the way at the right is Saturday. They make it insignificant, but it's, it's the last day of the week. See, Sunday the first day of the week. Go ahead. All Christians observe this day as a holy day in memory of the resurrection of Christ. See, they lied to you and told you Jesus rose, Jesus rose on that day to, to, to back up this change. Again, brother and sister, God don't change. If this, we reading about Sabbath all over the Bible, brother and sister. If it was going to change, don't you think God would have told you one time? In the Bible, we got to listen to a man tell us it changed, and you can't read it one time that it changed in the Bible. Even though you reading Sabbath hundreds of times, hmm. keep my Sabbath. I kill you if you don't keep my Sabbath. Keep my Sabbath. 
My Sabbath is for all people. My house is going to be called a house of prayer for all people. And if the strangers keep my Sabbath, I'm going to bless them better than my people. So we don't see this in the Bible. Matter of fact, we're going to see where it started at as far as man is concerned. Sunday, the first day of the week, all Christians observe this day as a holy day in memory of the resurrection of Christ. Since when? Since the beginning of the fourth century. Oh, since the beginning of the fourth century. Go ahead. Sunday has been established as the Lord's day by the church. See, when they say the church, it's really talking about the church from Rome. See, the Pope and them gave you this. The Pope and his boys gave us this. That's why I said the church. Because who was in charge at that time? Since the beginning of the fourth century, you know what the fourth century, that's going back to 300 AD. Look, Jesus died in about 30 AD. So you mean to tell me it took 300 years to 300. That's the fourth century. That's why this is called the, what, the 21st century now, right? Because we're in 2000. That's why you was in the 1900s. They called it the 20th century because you count a century from basically 1 to 99 was a century or 1 to 100. That was a century, but you wasn't in, you were still in single digits or you hadn't got to three triple digits. So that was the first century from 1 to 99, 1 to 100. From 101 to 200 was the second century. So the fourth century would have been doing 300 something AD. But that's hundreds of years after Jesus and the Bible was completed. Now they gonna establish a new day 300 years after Jesus. They're going to come up with a new day. Since the beginning of the fourth century, Sunday has been established as the Lord's Day by the church. Go ahead. A special day to be sanctified by rest from secular work and by public worship. See, but we know why they came up with that day. They, that's the old pagan day. He's going to tell you. Go ahead. The old Teutonic peoples held the day sacred to the sun. Uh huh. The Latin folk call it the Lord's Day. Dias Demar De Dias Dominicus Dominicus mm -hmm. from which the French, Italian, and Spanish names for Sunday have been derived. Okay, now that's good. Go to uh, the next one, University and Standard Encyclopedia. See, we got to read this to find out how this change coming about. It's not in the Bible. See, if it's in the Bible, I read it to you. If I can see, I wouldn't. I could care less, brother and sister. If I could see that the Sabbath day changed and I'm supposed to go to church on Sunday, if I can read that in the Bible, I, won't, I wouldn't be here today. I'd be somewhere tomorrow or be here tomorrow. If I could read that in the Bible, you can't read that in the Bible. God don't change. That's what you can read in the Bible. He said the seventh day, he meant it. Go to the Universal Standing Encyclopedia all the way to the right and we're going to read under Sunday. Go down to Sunday because I copy some other stuff there. But go down to Sunday. Go ahead. Sunday, the first day of the week, observed by Christians, almost universal see, as a holy day. See, and, that, and that's true. Most people call themselves Christians. They observe this day. But what was the first scripture we read that Jesus did? In Luke 4, it said Jesus, as his custom was, went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. So Jesus kept the Sabbath day that the Bible give you, the seventh day. Now people are going to come up with a new one and say they following him. You ain't following him. And they're going to lie again and say he rose on that day, which is not the case. And we're going to get to that. So, but once again, read it at the top again. I'm sorry. Sunday, the first day of the week. What day of the week? Read it again. Sunday, the first day of the week. See, so you can't get away from it. So... Man has not been able to hide what day is what. The big lie is that man has told us it changed from the seventh day to the first day. They can't hide what day is what. God ain't going to let them do that because God going to give you a chance to do what he said to do. God told you to remember the Sabbath, the seventh day, to keep it holy. He going to give you a chance to do that. You just can't listen to man telling you it changed. It ain't no question what day is what. If God created the world in six days and rest of seven days, he made a seven day week. You still got a seven day week. All you got to do is be able to count to seven. And you look anywhere, you can see that. 
So you got a chance to do it. You just can't listen to somebody lie and tell you that it changed. That's the question. It's not like some people say, oh, you don't know. How you know what day is what? Because I can read. Sunday, the first day of the week. Now, yes, it's observed by Christians almost universally as a holy day. And that ain't that's the truth. But see, they don't they don't know how to be true Christians because if they're going to be a true Christian, they're going to follow Christ. And Christ kept the commandments. He kept the fourth commandment. Remember the seventh day to keep it holy. He kept that. But yeah. It's observed by Christians universe. And, and again, that's why the Bible said the road to hell, the road to destruction is broad and many on that road. So it's only supposed to be a handful of people, a few people going the right way. So I'm sorry. I keep talking. Read it again. Sunday, the first day of the week. Sunday, the first day of the week. Go ahead. Observed by Christians, almost universal as a holy day in honor of the resurrection of Christ. See, can you read that in the Bible? See, we got to go to the encyclopedia to show you how you got Sunday nowadays. Why everybody go to church on Sunday. We got to go to the encyclopedia to show you that. You know why? Because it's not in the Bible. So that's the only way we can show it to you. They lying to you. You cannot read this in the Bible. Go ahead. The hallowing of Sunday appears incons incontestably. incontestably as a definite law of the church in the beginning of the fourth century. See, he said the hallowing. See, man got some nerve. He said the hallowing, that means make it holy. He telling you who made it holy. It wasn't God. The hallowing, just like it said, hallowed be thy name. That means God's name is holy. So man got the, uh, the nerve, the audacity to make, try to make him a day holy. That's really from Satan. Satan tried to compete with God. He going to come up with a day just like God did. The hollowing of making holy of Sunday appears incontestably as a definite law of the church in the beginning of the fourth century. Again, they tell you when it started. The beginning of the fourth century, brothers and sisters, is 321, what he's talking about here, the date is 321 AD because he's going to name the emperor who did it. Let's see who did it. Go ahead. The emperor Constantine confirmed the custom by law of the state. See, they had it a state law too. He confirmed it during that same period in the 4th century. 321 AD is when he made it a law. They got that on the books. He made it a law. But that's 300 years after Jesus had left. It didn't change in between that. It didn't change in the Bible. Nobody knew it before then. They decided to come up with it. A Roman emperor. Constantine confirmed the custom by a law of the state throughout what? Throughout the medieval period, the authority of the church was so universally recognized that secular leg legislation in this regard were almost unnecessary. See, because everybody was doing what the Catholic Church said back then, so they ain't have to have a man make no law, but they're going to come up with some laws nowadays for you because people like us getting away from what they say to do. But we don't care what they say to do. We care what the Bible say. Go ahead. The Catholic Church then required and still requires abstinence from servile work on that day. Oh, no kidding. And what else? And the assistance of mass of all who are not lawfully hindered. See, the Catholic Church, it mentioned the Catholic Church because they the ones gave you this, brother and sister. It said they require it then because they the ones introduced it and still require abstinence from servile work on that day. Look, I try to do as much work as I can on Sunday if I ain't tired. So they're going to be mad at me. I can care less. The day not to work on is the day God said don't work. You see how this is slapping God's face? They're going to come up with their own Sabbath day. And God said he hallowed or made holy what day? The seventh day. We read that in the Bible, didn't we? That's right. God said he sanctified it and made it holy. Satan got the audacity to come up with another day and the world been following it. That's why the world is going to hell, going to hell in a handbag, doing everything that God said don't do. Going just off. Go to John 19 now. You, you can read the rest on your own. John 19. Back to the Bible. Because we're going to kill the story that Jesus rose on that day. Then that's conclusive. Or as they said in the encyclopedia, that's going to 
be incontestable proof that the Sabbath couldn't have changed because the lie that they gave you not even true. John 19. See, the reason why they say Jesus rose on Sunday is because they really wanted to make it that day because they, they, they like to worship the false god on that day already. But they had to come up with something when it came to when he died. So John 19 and verse 30. John 19 and verse 30. This is when Jesus was on the cross. We're going to see when he died. And then we can have an idea when he, when, he, when he resurrected. That's why they got early Sunday morning service, sunrise service, because they say Jesus rose then. That's not the truth, brothers and sisters. John 19 and 30. Go ahead. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, mm -hmm. he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. Now, Jesus died. That's what it means. He died right there. He bowed his head and gave up the ghost. Now, he was on the cross at this point. Go ahead. The Jews, therefore, because it was the preparation that the body should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day. Mm -hmm. For that Sabbath day was an high day. Mm -hmm. Besought Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. Okay, they wanted to get Jesus down off the cross. See, this is where they come up with the lie that Jesus died Friday evening. He died Good Friday. And they know it was it was an evening when he died, but they say Friday evening, Good Friday, and he rose Easter Sunday. But we know better than that because he going to tell us something about three days and three nights. But they come up with Friday because they knew. See, in one instance, they will admit to you that Saturday is the Sabbath, and they said Jesus died the day before the Sabbath. So they say Friday. But what they didn't know is what we know right here. Jesus died the day before a high Sabbath, which is one of the annual Sabbaths. See, the Lord got annual Sabbaths around his feast days that come every year. So that's why I said here, the Jews, therefore, because it was the preparation that the body should not remain on the cross on the Sabbath day. But that wasn't Saturday as we know it. It's just like when we had these feasts, we'd be here on a Tuesday, right? right. We'd be here on a Wednesday. Because these feast days come any day of the week because they on a date. They on the 15th day of the first month. Just like your birthday. Your birthday going to change days of the week every year. If your birthday is on the 10th day of the ninth month, then it might be on a Tuesday this year. The next year is going to be on a Wednesday and so forth. Well, that's how these high Sabbaths are. They high because they annual. They come once a year. Just like your birthday. So that's what it's saying here at verse 19. The Jews, because it was a preparation that the body should not remain on the cross on the Sabbath day, for that Sabbath day was an high day. What does that mean? That means it's one of the annual Sabbath days. That's a high Sabbath day. It was an high day. And we know which one it was because we have read the Bible. We know Jesus died on the Passover. And the day after the Passover is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. That's a high Sabbath day. He tell you in the Bible, don't work on that day. That's all Sabbath means, don't work. You're going to rest. So, it was a high day. It wasn't Friday, so we got to do some research. Let's go to Matthew 28. We got to do some research. And we know it couldn't have been Friday. You know why? Because we can count to three. That's how we know it couldn't have been Friday. Jesus said he's going to be in the grave three days and three nights, which we're going to get to next. And you can't get it from Friday evening to Sunday morning. 28 and 1. But, but again, we want to read because they said Jesus rose from the first day of the week. So therefore, they didn't change, gave us a new Sabbath day. 28 and 1. Go ahead. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week. Wait a minute. Even in this, it's telling you it, we got both the days in this verse, right? That's right. We got the seventh day, Sabbath. And we got the first day, which come after the seventh day, right? We got both of them. Why didn't it say the future new Sabbath or the new Sabbath? Because they saying Jesus rose right here. But it didn't. It said in the end of the Sabbath. That means the sun then went down on the Sabbath day, Saturday night. The sun then went down. Now, wasn't, wasn't nobody doing that in the dark. Once the sun went down, them women wasn't trying to go to Jesus' grave. They waited right until almost sun up.
to get there. So what it's telling you, showing you the transition. The Sabbath has ended Saturday night. In the end of the Sabbath, then it said, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to the sepulcher. Go ahead. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven. See, you might say, well, we know, even though it's showing you Sunday morning, we know Jesus rose Saturday evening. We know he rose Saturday evening because we're going to get to the point where he had to be in the grave three days and three nights. So it had to be an even amount of days and nights. So he couldn't be in there uh, three nights and two days. No, it had to be an even amount. So they, that's when the women got there, though. They got there early Sunday morning. It was actually still dark. And an angel came. And rolled back the, st the stone from the door. Go ahead. And sat upon it. Mm -hmm. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. Mm -hmm. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake mm -hmm. and became as dead men. Mm -hmm. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here. See, he was already gone. See, that's why I started off at the end of the Sabbath, because just when Jesus rose, he rose at the end of the Sabbath. And now it's just dawning toward the first day. We hadn't even got light. And he is long gone by, by the time they get there. So he said, and for fear of him, the keepers did shake. And verse 5, and the angel answered and said unto the woman, Fear not, for I know that you seek Jesus, which was crucified. Now, they got there, but, but what happened to Jesus? Go ahead, verse 6. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay. See, he is not here, he said. He already gone. Now, pay attention that it's still dark. It haven't even gotten light on the first day. It's the first day. The first day started the evening before. But it still haven't gotten light on the first day. It's still yet dark, as it say in John 20. But when they got there, the angel said, he is not here. Didn't nobody see him rising, did they? Mm -hmm. He is not here, for he is risen already. As he said, come see the place where the Lord lay. Matter of fact, flip over to John 20. We're going to show you that same scenario. We're going to show you that same scenario that he was already gone. John 20, and we're just going to read that first verse. See, when they got there, the Sabbath had ended Saturday night, and they got there first thing trying to get there right as the sun was coming up because they didn't want to be in no graveyard in the middle of the night. So they trying to get there right as the sun is coming up. But they got there a little early, 20 and 1. Go ahead. The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early. Oh, oh now it's the first day of the week already. See, he just gave you the transition from the other place as it, the, the Sabbath had ended and then now it's dawning toward the first day of the week, drawing toward the day part of it. But it's the first day of the week when they get there. It just ain't light on the first day of the week. The first day of the week comes Mary Magdalene when? Early. Early. What time? When it was yet dark. It was yet dark. But it's still the first day of the week, ain't it? That's right. That's showing you the day had started in the evening here. See, you might read the 28th chapter of Matthew and think, well, you know, it was just not dawning toward the first Yeah, it's just dawning toward the day part of the day. It's already the first day because the day starts in the evening. The first day of the week come at Mary Magdalene early when it was yet dark. Go ahead. Unto the sepulcher and see the stone taken away from okay. the sepulcher. Now, this, we ain't going to read all of this because this is the same time we read in Matthew 28. When it, the angel, when they showed up, the angel said, he is not here, he is risen. So it's still dark. Jesus we, is not seen rising the first day of the week. He already has risen. So how do we get that he rose the first day of the week, therefore we change the Sabbath? It's not biblical. Go to Matthew 12 now. Let's show you how we know he had rose 
Saturday evening. Just as the first day of the week was about to come in. Show you how we know it. Because Jesus can't lie, brothers and sisters. And he, and he didn't leave no stone unturned. He let you know all this stuff for. So when the lies come, you know what to believe and not believe. Matthew 12. So you got all these scriptures here for a reason. They asked Jesus some point blank for a sign. And he going to give them one. 12 and 38. Go ahead. Then certain other scribes and other Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we would see a sign from thee. Mm -hmm. But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, mm -hmm. and there shall no sign be given to it but the sign of the prophet Jonas. He called him, he said, Evil, y'all need a sign. You want to see a miracle or something? Look, you need to believe the truth. An evil and adulterous generation want a sign, seek a sign. But I tell you what, the only sign I'm going to give you about who I am, that I am the one you questioning, I am the one, I'm going to give you the only sign I'm going to give you is Jonas. So let's see what the sign of Jonas, and this is telling us that Jesus is the Christ. He is the one we need to worship and honor. That's what this sign is letting us know. Let's see what the sign is, though. Verse 40. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly. Oh, just like Jonas was three days and three nights. So that means a three full complete days. Right. Three days and three nights. Go ahead. In the whale's belly. So what? So shall the son of man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. See, somebody might get confused. You know, we always say day first. That's just natural. That don't mean that's the beginning of the 24-hour period just because we say day first. It don't matter. And to look at the order of it, even when it comes to Jesus, you have to look at what part of the day he went in the grave first. That's all you got to do. So he said, though, as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man, talking about himself, Jesus, he called himself the Son of Man often, be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. So Jesus said, the sign I'm giving you of who I am, I'm going to be three days and three nights in the grave. That's the heart of the earth. See, some places just say three days. But see, I'm glad here he got specific, and he got specific for a reason. That means we're talking a full 72 hours. Three days and three nights, he said, right? Right. That's an even amount of days and nights. It has to balance out. That means if he go in the grave at nighttime, and that's his first night, he cannot come in the, come out of the grave at a halfway point. He can't come out of the grave in the morning, in other words, because that wouldn't be an even amount of days and nights, however many you count. You can be counting one or two or three. Just like if he said he's going to be in the grave for one day and one night. You can't say, well, he went in the grave Friday night and he came out Saturday morning. No, that's just one night. You didn't, you didn't get the day in there. He can't come out in the morning. In other words, if he go in the grave in the evening, he got to come out in the evening to make it a day and a night or two days and two nights, or three days and three nights. It have to be the same time he went in to balance. So that lets you know right off, brother and sister, if Jesus died, they lied and told you Friday evening. If he died Friday evening, he couldn't come out Sunday morning. They couldn't get a balance. You're going to have a less amount of days than nights if he come out Sunday morning. But we saw that wasn't the case. He didn't rise. When they got there early the first day of the week, he was already risen. Now, let's go to, uh, we got this chart we're going to look at. Before we look at the chart, because he said point blank, three days and three nights. Let's look at, uh, I want to look at something else before we look at the chart. Go to Mark uh, Mark the 14th chapter. Mark 14. Mark 14. And we're going to see again Actually, it's uh, Mark 15. Mark 15. 
Mark 15. We're going we're gonna to get down to verse uh, 42. Mark 15 and 42. Because I want to make sure you know what time of day it was when he went in. 15 and 42. Go ahead. And now when the evening was come, because it was the preparation that is the day before the Sabbath, mm -hmm. Joseph, Joseph of Arimathea, an honorable counselor, which also waited for the kingdom of God, came and went in boldly unto Pilate and Craved the body of Jesus. Uh-huh. And Pilate marveled if he were already dead. See, Jesus still on the cross, and he said the evening was come, right? Right. So we in the evening time. Go ahead. And Pilate marveled if he were already dead. Mm. And calling unto him the centurion, he asked him whether he had been any while dead. Uh-huh. And when he knew it of the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. Okay, so now he gave the body to Joseph. And Joseph is going to go ahead and bury Jesus at this evening. It's right as the sun is going down. It's in the evening. Go ahead. Because the thing that they wanted to do is make sure Jesus was clean off the cross before it actually got dark and started that Sabbath day, that high Sabbath day. But go ahead. And he brought fine linen and took him down and wrapped him in the linen and laid him in a sepulcher which was hewn out of a rock mm -hmm. and rolled a stone unto the door of the sepulcher. Mm -hmm. And Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, beheld where he was laid. See, they beheld where he, where he was laid. So now, we'll go right into the 16th chapter. Right? We might as well read this again. Read this same thing. So this was three days and three nights earlier, but go ahead. And when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Solomon, Solomon, and brought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. Uh-huh. Go ahead. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week. See, the first day of the week, very early in the morning, even before the sun came up, that's when they got to the sepulchre. I just wanted to read that one more time. But now we saw Jesus went in in the evening. That's what verse 42 said, when the evening was come. Because it was a prep race at the day, that is the day before the Sabbath. They went to get him down off the cross. They didn't want him on the cross on that high day, which was about to start at sundown. As soon as it got dark, it was about to start. They put him in the grave. It was an evening. Now go to the chart. Because clearly Jesus died. If, I mean, if you read the whole story about how they crucified Jesus, you find that they arrested him in the nighttime. They, they held them over to the next morning. They had a little mock trial. They beat them up through the day, you know. And from about noon to 3, he was on the cross. From about noon to 3 p.m., what we call noon, he was on the cross. It got dark because the father had to comfort him a little bit. That's another lesson. It got dark during, during that period. But then from 3 o'clock to sundown, he was still on the cross to what we just read when Joseph went there. And they took him down just as sun was going down. So he died in the evening and was buried in the evening. He didn't get buried in the morning. He got buried in the evening. So it's false teaching to say that he died from Friday evening. So now on this handout that we got, I ain't even going to write it on the board. They say that Jesus died Good Friday evening and rose Easter Sunday morning. If Matthew 12 is right, that Jesus said he got to be in the heart of the earth for three days and three nights, that cannot be true. You worshiping a lie. Because if Jesus died Friday night and was buried on a Friday night, then that's only one night, Friday, and then Saturday is two nights if you tell me he rose early Easter Sunday morning. Something is wrong with that whole scenario. But they're going to give you Friday because they know Jesus died the day before the Sabbath. And they didn't know about the annual Sabbath that come any day during the week like your birthday. They didn't know about that. They weren't even calculating that. And we know Jesus died the day before high Sabbath. It ain't even hard to figure out. He died the day before the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread because he had to die on the Passover. See, we was concentrating on what the Bible was saying instead of what man has given us. See, man gave you Good Friday. Matter of fact, I'm going to take a break and show you what Jesus said. Matthew uh, 
26. Matthew 26. I'm going to show you what Jesus said. Jesus didn't say nothing about Good Friday. That's a lie they gave you. But let's see what Jesus said. If you concentrate on what Jesus said, then you know the truth of the matter. Matthew 26. I'm adding all kind of stuff in this lesson. I must be crazy. Teach. Matthew 26. Go ahead, verse 1. And it came to pass, when Jesus had finished all these sayings, mm -hmm. he said unto his disciples, Ye know that after two days is the feast of the Passover, mm -hmm. and the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. Ten